he told me to do whatever we need to do. Like when we wanted to go see him or like spend time with him, he would be like, oh, well, you better like do something with a guy to get right over here because I'm not going to waste my gas to go see you. Like he would tell us like that and us being stupid, we would do what we had to do just to go be with him. And he would always make it seem like my family hated me. He, he would tell me bad things about my family, acting like he talked to them, telling me that they said they didn't care about me. And none of it was true, but I lost my family because of that. And I always believed him over anybody. When I had boyfriends and stuff, he would, he would get me to break up with my boyfriends. He would get me to leave all the people that wanted to see me to do good because I thought, oh no, they're just trying to mess up my life right now. I'm just worried about getting my money. Getting what money though, when I, I didn't even get a dollar out of it. I probably made over $20,000 the whole time I was working for him. And I never got a, a dollar out, out of it. I never got shoes, I never got clothes, nothing. And I always needed clothes when I was with him. I would always tell him, I don't have clothes. I, I've been wearing like the same thing, I, I, I need to do clothes. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't care. He would just care about himself. And he would make it seem like he cared about his daughter. He would hit us while he was holding his daughter. He would do drugs around his daughter. His daughter was in the hotel bathrooms waiting with us while somebody else had a date, like a guy in the room. So it's like, how do you care about your daughter when you're having her go from hotel room to hotel room at only four or five months? Like, it's a baby. She shouldn't even be in a hotel room like that. She shouldn't be around any of this. She should be home. Like, she should be watching, like, cartoons and stuff on TV, trying to learn to speak and walk. She can't do none of that in a hotel room. Like, that's no way to live. How many of you girls would be in a hotel room? Um, sometimes it was 10 of us in one room, and sometimes we would get at least two or three rooms just for all of us to be able to work. Because he just wanted money so he said oh for you to get more rooms because you guys are getting so many guys then we'll do that he's like because we don't want to miss out on no money so he would take pictures and videos of all of the girls whether they were underage or not post them on his instagram his twitter his facebook his snapchat yeah. and then that's how people would be like hey i i want to book a uh mm, not really um i don't know there's a website it's like Craigslist and it has a section for escorts. Is it that page? Yeah. Okay. So I had a section for escorts and that's where the girls would post their ads and stuff. And yeah, and we would get like a texting app number and um, they would call us and we would talk to them and give them the address and we wouldn't like discuss nothing except for like the time basically that they wanted to spend with us. But really it was just all sex. Are you, are you scared you're going to go back to doing it again? Honestly, not really, but at the same time, it is a temptation because it's fast money. It's a lot of money, but honestly, I don't think I'm going to go back at all. Like to go through all this already for, for the past few years, like with my life and it's just, I don't want to do none of it anymore. Like, I just want to do good. Like, it sucks when you're in a hotel room and you're seeing your friends post on Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever about how they're graduating from high school, they're going to prom, they're doing all this stuff, and you couldn't do it because you were in hotel rooms. You were working. And it just sucks because I missed out a lot on a lot. But honestly, I could do better now. And I could be part of my friends' lives now. My brothers and sisters, they're they're starting to talk to me again because they're seeing that I want to make a change. And it just feels good to have my family back because honestly, before I had nobody to talk to. I'd be locked in a hotel room. I would cry about how I was sad and wanted to leave, but I couldn't tell my family because they see it as, okay, you chose him over us, so there's nothing we can do. It was embarrassing because my brother found my ad online one time, my older brother. And he told me too, like, what are you doing with your life? And he told me, if you want to be on the streets like that, then do it. He's like, I try to help you so much, and I, I can only do so much for you. And to me, I was like, oh, I don't care. I have Shy. He's my big brother. Like, I'm Shy's little sister. I don't care about you. But honestly, I should have I should have listened to that earlier. But I never did. <laughs> How many siblings do you have? Uh, there's six of us, and I'm the second youngest. You have a lot of big siblings. <laughs> yeah.
Well, I'm glad that you guys are all talking again. Yeah. Um, how how much would like how much would what cost? I don't know how that works. Like that it, it just like really depends on like the brand basically because he is the one that sets the prices for you. And um on the days where like we were making good money, Shy would be okay with us having our our price is high, which is like 200, 300 for an hour or whatever. But when there was no money coming in, he would tell us, okay, you guys are going to start doing like $70 for an hour. You guys are going to start doing $50 for this much time. And it kind of like made it feel like crap because it's like, why am I going to go? <laughs> My price is so low for so much time. That's like basically giving myself away for free. So, Were you ever scared when you were with these? Were they just random guys? Yeah, because they were random guys and we never knew if it was going to be like a cop and us get in trouble for like prostitution or something. And um, there's times where the guys have tried to rob us. They would stalk us. There's times where the guys would threaten us. There's times where guys would try to kidnap us and everything. And it's just really scary because you never know who's the guy who's the next guy who's gonna walk in through that door you don't know what they're capable of you don't know what they have on them or anything so it is scary because a lot of the guys they would get mad at us too so it's like you never really knew it was always risky it was always a risk you were gonna take it um answering the door so how many times have you had a gun pointed at you um, while working, I had a few times, but mostly it was by Shai when he wanted to, like, threaten us and stuff. So, um. <laughs> you don't know how many times? It was a lot. But Shai always had this gun, and he would always have it loaded. And he would point it at all of us, like, trying to play around. But he would be scared because his finger would be by the trigger, and it's loaded. So it's like... I don't know. Like, Did you ever think you were going to die? Yeah. Like, I started thinking that this past time I was working for him because he beat me up quite a few times. He recorded me crying on the floor while he beat me. He had me go in the car naked with a blanket wrapped around me, threatening to sell me on my birthday. So it's like, I spent my 18th birthday locked in a hotel room. They made me think that we were going to go to Disneyland. We were going to do all this fun stuff. And he got mad at me because I asked him, what are we going to do for my birthday? And that's why he beat me and stuff because I told him I didn't trust him because he never kept his word on deals that we made, like he he that he would come up with and we would agree to. I told him I didn't trust him because of that, and he got mad at me and he decided to beat me that day because I brought that up. Kind of destroyed me, like I became a whole different person, and I don't know, like <laughs> my family stopped talking to me. Shy, I chose him over my family chose him over my friends. I lost a lot of my family because of him. A lot of my relationships that I had, like I lost everything. All I was worried about was making Shai happy. And I don't know why, like, it's just like, I felt like I needed to make him happy. And you said that there was other girls too. Yeah. How many were there? Some days there's 15 of us. Some days there's only one or two of us, but for the most part, there was a lot of us, and a lot of us were underage. So I was 16 when I st when I started working for him, and I barely turned 18 on February 3rd. So I've been working for him for a while, and once I was 18, he was like, "Okay, now he told me now you could go to the clubs." He's like, "Now you could work there," and I was just like, "Oh my god, like, he's gonna have me do a lot of stuff I don't want to do now." So I don't know, and. It, it was like hard because when they would have me away from him, I would have nightmares of him making me like do stuff I didn't want to do that I would get in trouble for. So it kind of like, I feel like it was a sign to let me know like if I keep messing with him, it's just going to go further and further. So why did you end up leaving him this last time? This last time I ended up leaving him because he told me and another girl to leave because that he was going to kill us. So it's like, it was either us stay there and get shot by him and killed, or we left, like he said, and we would escape. He didn't think we were going to make it like far, like from where we were. But 
I know, like, not to just sit there and wait for him to come get me. Like, as soon as he told me to leave, like, the girls where she was confused. She didn't know what to do. I told her, we're going to go to the gas station. I'm going to ask somebody to use their phone. And we're going to get out of here. We're going to go to my mom's or something because she lives close by. And then from there, you can find your way home. But you're welcome to stay at my house as long as you want. And she was, like, she was scared. She was crying. She kept crying. And she was really scared. And I was scared, too. But I wasn't going to sit there and cry at a gas station and wait for somebody to ask me if I needed help. So I seek the help myself. And I started asking people. I only asked two people to use their phones. I said, what? Sorry. I asked one person. And um, I asked the gas station lady, and she was like, no, sorry, no, okay, it's fine. And I saw a guy walking up, and I was like, hey, but he spoke Spanish, so I was like, hey, can I use your phone? And he's like, I'm sorry, but I'm scared to let you use my phone. I was like, oh, it's okay, I understand. So I just walked away, and I went back with my friend, and when he came out, he, he told me, you could use my phone. He said, but you don't have nobody with you, right? I said, I have a girl with me, and I told him what was going on. I said, we're running from a guy right now. And I really need to go home. I'm scared and this and that. Like, I just told him everything. And then he said, he was like, okay, well, I'm trusting you, but I hope you're not setting me up. I'm not setting you up. I don't, I'm not like that. Like, I don't do that to people. So then um, I used his phone to call my mom. And I was talking to my mom. And then he's like, if you let me talk to your mom, he's like, I'll give you a ride to your house. I just want to make sure it's your mom. I don't want to get set up. And I was like, okay, okay. I was like, thank you so much. Wow. Let me see the hands of the youth here. What do you mean out real loud? I'm not for sale. I'm not for sale. Say it again. I'm not for sale. I can't hear you. I'm not for sale. <laughs> okay.